What's going on, 5 Sharp fam? I'm AJ. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube. Welcome to another episode of Five Stripe Weekly and LA United. They drew FC Cincy 2-2 on Saturday night at TQL Stadium. And uh, the draw probably was a fair result at the end of the day. But uh, yeah, definitely some late heroics again by Andrew Gutman. But uh, yeah, in terms of this lineup, it started with Gutman in a uh, kind of back five that left center back uh, role a little bit uh, with uh, with Wiley as kind of a uh, wing back slash winger uh, on the left side, and it also saw Ronald Hernandez come in uh, from injury and back into the starting eleven for the first time since then. And uh, also, yeah, you saw Marcelino Moreno get the captain's armband and also start, of course. Uh, Cisneros was up top and Joseph was on the bench. I, uh, I think that there was maybe a little bit of an eye to Wednesday with this one, but uh, we shall see if that is, uh, is truly the case. But uh, yeah, in terms of uh, the start, it was pretty good. Uh, yeah, some... Uh, chances early a little bit uh Gutman creating one a little bit uh uh who uh yeah dropped it off to or crossed it to uh Cisneros and uh, yeah Almada had a first chance uh that eventually led to a corner for LA United uh but uh there was the next chance in which uh yeah there was uh a little bit of a uh just, uh, ooh, you know, some really, really good quality. And uh, Luis Araujo, uh, yeah, he drops it off to, uh, yeah, Almada in the middle of the pitch where he hits it one time into the top bins. Uh, really unstoppable hit. And, yeah, it was the uh, fourth assist for Araujo and uh, it was the fourth goal of the season for Almada. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Almada... I mean, he, it's not surprising he has the quality. He uh, hitting it from outside the box. It's definitely uh, you know not anything new from him in terms of for us. But uh, yeah, definitely uh, a quality goal. And uh, you know when we are up on the road, it definitely bodes well. Uh, definitely, it's much better than conceding first. But unfortunately. Uh, this match was end to end, and the uh, next goal unfortunately came from FC Cincy and from an old friend in Brandon Vasquez, who, uh, yeah, he tucked away his goal with his left foot uh, for the his 15th goal of the season. He is definitely uh, on fire and uh, definitely a guy that we have missed in our squad for sure. It's, uh, you know, how good would he be in... Uh, uh, you know, our squad right now, but it is what it is, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, he has been balling out for FC Cincy, and, uh, yeah, they also went ahead, uh, another kind of, uh, weird kind of, uh, error, and, uh, Purata, unfortunately, uh, on the end of this one, and, uh, yeah, failed to clear the ball on a set piece, I mean, he was supposed to you know, kind of be one of the guys that helps us, uh, you know, in our set piece defense this uh, as he's been brought in. But uh, yeah, their other striker, Brenner, uh, yeah, the header was deflected into the goal to give them a 2 1 lead. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, just very, very uh, annoying that, uh, you know, another set piece. We just cannot defend it well. It's just been a symptom of this season. But we almost uh, leveled it before the half uh, in the 43rd minute. Uh, Wiley, he kept the ball alive on the left. Yeah, he uh, chipped across over the goal. And uh, Luis Adarujo, yeah, he put a shot on goal. But uh, yeah, their, uh, their keeper, he was able to make the stop. Uh, there is to note, Alec Can didn't play this match. Uh, definitely... Uh, you know, their rookie goalkeeper has been playing well, and, uh, you know, you can see that, uh, you know, that's kind of why he, uh, 
it's not exactly standing on his head in terms of in this match, but he uh, definitely made some crucial stops in this one. But uh, yeah, we go into the half 2-1 down, but uh, into the second half, uh, Brooks Lennon, he came on for Ronaldo Hernandez, uh, offering that different dimension that uh, Lennon does. And um, yeah, it was his first match uh, since June 19th against Inter Miami. But uh, yeah, uh, Jose Martinez also came on for Cisneros. And uh, yeah, the uh, in terms of uh, the kind of crucial uh, kind of uh, contribution from Jose Martinez, we would see it later on in this match. But uh, yeah, we almost get a leveler in the 69th minutes some combination play from uh joseph uh in the middle of the box maybe uh he could have shot but he was uh yeah maybe a little crowded there and uh moreno had a pretty decent look as well but uh unfortunately uh yeah it was uh it was parried over uh the crossbar by the FC Cincy keeper, but uh, yeah, we put on the kitchen sink again. Dwyer came on, uh, Mosquera, the new signing, came on, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's basically we uh, we tend to keep throwing on the kitchen sink lately, and uh, you know, FC Cincy they had a battle uh, to keep us out of uh, the back of the nets, but uh, yeah, we uh, we. We're able to find that equalizer. 83rd minutes, Gutman. Uh, yeah, he uh, he made that diagonal run that put him inside the box, and uh, from a, a good ball that Jose Martinez was able to not only hold up but lay it off into the uh, the streaking Gutman. He was able to on his right in the box, tuck it away for. Uh, his second goal in as many games and the second goal uh, that uh, were heroics in as many games. I mean, of course, uh, you know, he had that game winner against Seattle Sounders the last match. But, uh, yeah, you know, it is uh, maybe a question of hand or not handball, but offside. Uh, you know, apparently he was not. Uh, maybe his shoulder at least uh, was at the very least. But... Uh, you know, the uh, explanation was that he was, uh, in terms of for the refs to uh, the coaching staff for FC Cincy, was that he was most likely onside. So very odd uh, that uh, VR, if they did check it, they, yeah, you know, that's what they said. It's, uh, yeah, it speaks to the volume of pretty much the questionable refing in this league, but... Uh, you know, there were a couple of handballs from FC Cincy, one in the box in the first half. So, uh, you know, if there were, I think this is pretty much the wash that, uh, you know, that, uh, that handball in the box, I don't know that, uh, that really could have been called as well. So this, uh, I think is pretty fair of the results, uh, in terms of the XG, it was 1.83 for FC Cincy to an XG of 1.73 for LA United, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I think some kudos as well for Rocco Rios Novo, he made some massive stops, uh, some that, uh, were fingertip saves, like, full stretch, also uh, one that he uh, parried onto the post late in the match. I mean, it was definitely uh, a really, I think he had like five saves in this match. Something crucial intervention from uh, the young goalkeeper. And, uh, you know, there were maybe a couple nervy moments with uh, his feet where he had to put it out of play. But that was, I think... The uh, lack of proper positioning a little bit and uh, kind of indecision a bit with uh, playing out from the back that, uh, you know, we love to try to do. But uh, there are some times where we just be, need to be more decisive. And uh, if we need to punt it upfield, then we do. But, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, this, uh, this result, you know, not what we wanted, but... Uh, you know, it's a point on the road and it's not bad, but the issue of it is, is the timing and, 
uh, you know, there weren't really any favorable results around us from uh, the teams uh, around us in the standings. And with this, uh, we, uh, with this draw, we dropped to 13th in the Eastern Conference, one from the bottom. But uh, yeah, we're only four points below the playoff line, but uh, we also do have a game in hand. So, yeah, it's uh, it's frustrating. It's super duper close from 6th to 13th as well. But, uh, you know, it is uh, definitely something that, you know, we need to pick up three points and three points uh, frequently fast. But uh, Gonzalo Pena, he spoke after the match. He uh, praised the fight, uh, but he was uh, frustrated by the draw. Uh, he said... Uh, his message to the team when they travel away from the Benz is, quote, At times my message has been when we play away, we always try to win. But if for some reason we cannot win, we cannot lose. So at the very least, uh, you know, there is the fight being shown. But I think, uh, you know, there's too many spurts uh, from uh, the squad and, uh, you know, the players that they basically are not uh, able to sustain that pressure for 90 minutes. And I think you always see that, uh, you know, is it the lack of quality in the players, the lack of coaching? I think maybe it's an amalgamation of all of it. But, uh, yeah, that pretty much very much leads to where we are in the standings. And it's it does not lie. I think, uh, you know, there are some fortuitous moments for us this season, but also some uh, really drab mediocre uh and poor affairs too that's i think yeah you know 13th probably is fair at the moment but we also need to uh play the rest of these games so hopefully we can rectify the spot that we are in the standings but yeah that pretty much wraps it for this match uh we face new york red bulls on wednesday at the bends and i'll have that preview later on for you in this episode but uh next up is the news and andrew gutman's uh goal it was a milestone in mls history it was the 20th thousand or 20 uh 20 thousand mls goal and that comes after 26 years four months and eight days a total of 9,000 in 626 days and uh that was the that first goal in mls history was scored by eric winalda uh for the san jose clash in april on april 6th 1996 so definitely uh quite a while since the uh the first goal but uh kind of pretty cool that andrew gutman was the the guy that uh that scored that milestone uh netter but uh another bit of news that came out of this match was well andrew gutman he did have to come out of this match uh probably just a little bit of a cramp uh but uh, that's all it was, apparently, that uh, he wasn't actually really, really injured. It was, uh, apparently, he was just tired. Uh, and then Franco, he, uh, yeah, late in the match as well, he got his foot stamped on. But uh, other than that, he apparently will be okay as well, according to Doug Roberson. So, good, good news. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, uh, in switching gears, uh, a guy that is injured and, uh, of course, out for the season is Brad Guzan. Uh, there was a brick-by-brick brick, uh, little short-form documentary from the team that was quite, uh, yeah, quite excellent, actually. Actually, and, uh, yeah, was uh, definitely, in terms of uh, showing the progress from Brad Guzan and his rehab, uh, there was... Uh, Pretty much him going through uh, a little bit of his journey to here. It will be, I think, a, a little bit of a series with LA United as he makes his uh, rehab and recovery. And, uh, you know, there was a little bit of a tease, but essentially it pretty much uh, was an announcement that, yes, he is and will uh will return in 2023 so uh, you know it will be interesting to see uh you know our goalkeeper uh crop and who uh will be our number one next season but uh yeah definitely 
I think we've seen uh, without Braguzan uh, what we've been missing this season as well a little bit at times. But uh, moving on from that, Edwin Mosquera, he did a little uh, questionnaire, 17 questions uh, with LA United's uh, media team. And uh, there were some uh, kind of interesting tidbits where he uh, was uh, asked why he chose to come to LA United. He says he knew about the club and... Uh, knew that it was one of the best in the U.S., and uh, he knew he was going to be very comfortable here. Uh, he also mentioned that his uh, nickname is Shira, and um, he, in terms of uh, the player that inspired him to play was Robinho, and also uh, in terms of the uh, kind of other tidbits was that, uh, yeah, the... Uh, kind of favorite show that he grew up watching was Woody the Woodpecker. Very, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a deep, deep cut there. I don't, that, he's a young guy. I'm uh, surprised that uh, Woody the Woodpecker is actually something that, uh, you know, is, uh, I think, seen very much by uh, younger folks. So, definitely interesting. But, uh, yeah, you know, he has uh, played the last two matches, come on as a sub, and uh, you know, has looked lively and, uh, you know, has put some good balls in. So, you know, uh, it will be interesting to see how he fully integrates into the team. But uh, on to LA United 2. They unfortunately fell 2-0 to Miami FC on Saturday night as well. Uh, in the 31st minute, Noah Cobb, the homegrown, unfortunately, he was sent off. Uh, he was the last man. He brought down uh, one of Miami FC's players. But uh, to note, Alan Carlton, uh, Andrew Carlton's brother, uh, he made his second straight start for the twos, and he went the full 90 for the first time. Uh, the midfielder, 17-year-old, he, uh, he uh, had a passing percentage of 94%, won 8 of 12, 12 ground duels, and uh, yeah, he was, uh, you know, in terms of putting a foothold in the match, he was uh, apparently... Uh, you know, put uh, put a stamp onto that match. So, uh, you know, it will be interesting to see how much uh, Carlton can, uh, you know, improve and uh, maybe play a part, uh, you know, for the first team in the future. So, we shall see, of course. But uh, that does it for the news and gets us to the match preview. And uh, Wednesday night, New York Red Bulls at the Benz. It's, uh, yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting, I think. Uh, we uh, always, it's a tough one against the New York Rebels. Uh, it's a, usually a struggle to score. Uh, some kind of uh, style clashes, definitely, with the way we play and the way they play. But, uh, yeah, they last played Orlando City, and they uh, Orlando only managed one shot, but it was good enough to, uh, to get them the win, and... Uh, yeah, <laughs> New York Ripples, they had 15 shots, but only one was on target. So, uh, very, very interesting that, uh, you know, New York Rebels, they lost at home to that. So, a little bit of a, uh, a smash and grab by Orlando City. I suspect it'll be a little bit different at the Benz for us. Uh, we'll try to impose ourselves, but, uh, you know, obviously, will it be the best tactic? We will find out, but, uh... Yeah, New York Rebels, they're in fourth in the Eastern Conference, 37 points. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, it's just, it's tight, uh, all in all, uh, between uh, a lot of uh, the Eastern Conference right now. It's just, yeah, I mean, uh, not much you can do. It's uh, something that's, uh, yeah, the Eastern Conference is probably just a little bit mediocre, a little bit weak, probably, uh, this season, but... Uh, you know, we all know New York Rebels, they press high, they, uh, it's high energy, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, kind of that gag and pressing that, uh, you know, is, uh, super duper hard to play against, but, uh, in terms of key departures, Sean Davis, uh, Andrew Gutman, of course, uh, played for them last year, and so, you know, maybe, uh, he's got that affinity to score against his former clubs, he scored against, uh, FC Cincy twice, uh, after having played for New York Rebels, and, uh, you know, well, uh, okay, not twice, once, but, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, 
twice against former clubs, and so, you know, Andrew Grootman scoring against FC Cincy. Maybe this is another one that he can uh, score against them as well. So, uh, you know, in terms of uh, another player, Fabio, uh, he is no longer playing with them either. Uh, some key acquisitions for them this season, Luquinas, uh, Lewis Morgan, of course, coming from Inter-Miami, and Caden Clark. Yeah, Lewis Morgan, uh, man, he's a guy that just always scores against us. Uh, and these stats uh, via associate producer Michael Weiss. Uh, yeah, his uh, first goal in uh, MLS was against us in 2020. And uh, yeah, he's uh, scored 17 goals in MLS since 2020. Uh, yeah, he has scored not only in 2020 against us, 2021 and 2022. So yeah, he's a player that's a thorn in our side and definitely, uh, yeah, someone that's going to be a danger man for them that we need to look out for, for sure. But uh, getting into uh, the predictions from them uh, in terms of in the East, uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the pundits around MLS thought that they would probably, uh, in terms of uh, placing in the standings, uh, as low as ninth and as high as sixth. So they were a little overperforming what the expectations were. But uh, yeah, this season, 38 goals, four and 31 goals conceded. So uh, that plus goal difference, you know, they definitely are able to... Uh, because of that high press, uh, you know, get the the goals that they need and stop the opposition from uh, playing their game. But let's get into our starting eleven predictions, and uh, I think it's gonna be pretty unchanged. I think uh, Rocco Rios Novo is gonna be in between the six here. Uh, I think. Uh, the only change for me is probably Lennon at right back and uh, Parata Franco are the center backs with Gutman and Wiley uh, in the rest of the defense. Uh, now, whether Wiley plays as a winger or as a wing back, uh, you know, it probably is pretty fluid. But uh, yeah, I think you saw uh, Gutman as well kind of take up some uh, central midfield positions too, which definitely helps uh, Sosa and Moreno, uh, who I think will take the place in midfield again. Uh, now, in attack, Aruju, Almada uh, as those attacking midfielders, and I think it's Cisneros up top again. Uh, I think, uh, you know, there might be the kind of kind of want to maybe try to play with the ball a lot uh, in uh, in and around uh, the New York Red Bulls defense but I think uh, you know what we might have to do here is uh, you know try to you know uh, hit them fast on the counter when uh, you know maybe if uh, when they get the ball uh, you know we hit it long a little bit and hit them on the break that's uh, probably a, a tactic that we can definitely use to hurt them here. And uh, I think Ronaldo Cisneros is that man who has shown that while at uh, at home, he has been able to, uh, you know, put those away and get in behind all that uh, that we need uh, in those times that right now, yeah, I mean, we, we maybe need to simplify some things because uh, there are some, some larger issues aboard. But... What do you guys think? What should the starting 11 be? But, uh, yeah, let's get into the score prediction then. I think we might be able to actually uh, pull one out here. It's at home. Uh, New York Rebels against us anyway at home. Not as strong, and I think we can pull out a 1-0 win against the New York Red Bulls. So, what do you guys think? Let us know in those comments below. But guys, that pretty much does it for the episode, except for the question of the day. And the question of the day is, has Rocco Rios Novo done enough to earn the number one shirt for LA United? Uh, you know, does Raul Gudino deserve a look? I mean, that last match, he definitely was saving shots all over the place. And uh, yeah, it was definitely crucial for us. So, you know, probably doesn't lose his spot this upcoming match. But you guys... 
let me know in those comments below. Looking forward to what you have to say. But guys, that is the episode. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. I've been AJ, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah.